Hey guys, welcome back to the EA Sports FC 24 Wolfhampton career mode. A big episode to end this, whatever you call it, season one, season one finale. This is how I've been calling it. Last five games of the season. We got Luton Town in the first game, then Man City away, Crystal Palace at home. Oh my god, I didn't know how difficult it was. To be honest, we had a relatively easy run in towards the half part or the second half of the season, but... Little do I know that we still have yet to play against Man City, Arsenal, and Liverpool. So, wow. In terms of the top four, top five, will we get there? That, I'm not 100% sure. But I'm sure we are definitely going to make the best out of it. When you look at the standing, again, where's Arsenal? Ar I mean, the thing is, Arsenal is nowhere close to us at the moment. But they did beat us in the Cowboy Cup final. And while well, Man City, they beat us 2-0. We also beat Liverpool 2-1. But still, when they're in a top five team, you just know they're able to deliver. Again, the gap between Liverpool and us, it's only, what, four points. But they have two games in hand. I'm sure Liverpool might be busy with their own little schedule. Maybe in the FA Cup, maybe in the Europa League. But there's one thing that I wanted to do. I don't think you guys probably realize it. But when I look at a transfer hub, right? I've shortlisted a few players. Some of them I might sign. Some of them I might not be signing. And I saw Pilate. Mm -hmm. Guys, what do you guys think about this approach to sign? Well, that's the thing. Um, if Cunha leaves, just saying. Uh, if he leaves, then I think Andre Pilate might want to make a move again. He, I mean, he doesn't cost much, but... Let me try to get him. Oh, never mind. This guy's on loan to another club. Maybe I'll come back for him in the near future. But again, I don't think it's meant to be in this episode to sign a player like him. But I got to make sure I do all the training and stuff like that. These players got to be fit for the next game against Luton. First game, we got Luton. So Liverpool did win both of their games in hand. So we're sitting at third right now. And we still have City, Liverpool, and Arsenal to begin with. But today, with this lineup, let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to do the press conference, and I'll show you guys my lineup. Here is the lineup. Kofar in goal. Back five, we got Breno, Gomez, Tejalo, Arrojo, and Samedo in the middle. We got Lamina and Gomez. Cunha will be pretty much getting a start for the remainder of the season. I think he is on fire right now. Gordon on the left, and Carlos Fops is back after a spring knee injury. Good header. Back in. Cunha. Stunwell, well. Gordon with the finish. Oh my god, imagine we score. That is definitely the contender of the goal of the season. Oh no. Damn, we have been really good for the first 25 minutes. But one little misjudgment at the back there, allowing Adebayo to score. And 28 minutes in, Rob Edwards' side has put a 1-0 lead against Wolves. Lamina, to you. Oh, that's a good ball in. Heads it away. Back to the middle. Fobs with the finish, but Team Cruel, how is he doing that at the age of 40? I'm sure he is, like, very, very close to 40, but the header coming in. And Cunha continue his hot streak, and he has scored from a header. It was a good delivery there by Carlos Fobs, but more importantly, we have equalized it right before the halftime. Good tackle by Lamina. The captain is leading by example. To Fops. Holds the ball up against Lockgate. To the middle. Cunha makes it 2. 2-1. Two, what a solo play by Fops to provide an assist. And what a comeback he is having right now in this game. Two assists on his return. And Cunha makes it 2-1. Here comes a corner. We need to find that third goal. Larson couldn't quite get there. Bella guarded back to Sarabia. Far post, no, straight at Team Cruel. That ball was aiming for the hollow. And they just gave the ball away, and we gave the ball away as well. Last minute, but that is a foul at the back. Can we hold on a one goal lead with two more minutes to play here? Luton Town, again, they scored their only chance, but if we don't be careful enough, they might score. Juan, Breno. Oh my god, I don't see any orange shirt around me. He's gonna go by himself, isn't he? Oh my god. Larson, you gotta score there. I mean, we won this game already. But, 
can we get a final touch here? No, we can't. Referee's going to blow the whistle here. And that is it. First game today's episode with the three points. Monthly scouting report is here from Brazil this time. And unfortunately for this round, we are not able to hand a scholarship to any of these Brazilian players because, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. And we got to go back to the uh, Youth Academy and let's see, is there anybody? I mean, Marillo looks really good. Wow, 16-year-old only, 63 rated. Abreu is getting closer and closer. Uh, Sacco is getting closer and closer as well. I believe he is pretty much our first batch of players uh, in the academy because, again, he's from Ivory Coast. Pretty much all my list here are all Portuguese except Daco. So, again, I'm expecting Abreu might be asking for a contract soon. But, again, I'm not going to do so unless he asks for it. Right before the game, we have a transfer offer for Matt Doherty. Again, I'm not going to use him at all. Arguably, did I even use him this year? I doubt so. But we got an offer coming in for him from Crystal Palace. 2.75 million. I would definitely let him go. But right now, this is the big game you guys are anticipating of. It's the game against Man City. I believe they beat us 2-0 at the start of the season. But right now, traveling to Etihad Stadium. It's not going to be an easy job. But we got a point to prove. We got to show people why we are hungry for uh, for whatever we call it, Champions League football. But when we look at that, it's a very good team. I don't even need to look at it again. I mean, this team is definitely going to shred us apart if we don't play our good football. In terms of the lineup, again, I'm not. I'm just going to stick with you know whoever you know I want to. But again, uh, there are so many unwanted players on the reserves, which. We will be, you know, dealing with it by the end of this season. So, lineup, short and simple. Kofar and go backfire. We got Hugo Breno, who went up to 76 right now. Gomez on the left center back area. Dahalo, Breno, Semedo in the middle. We got Lamina, Gomez, and up front, we got Gordon, uh, Cunha, and also Fobbs. Gordon. Oh, look at that. Look at the room. Where's all the city player? Cunha, get into the middle. Header, finish. Oh my god. It would have been a dream start against Man City if Anthony Gordon half score, but we're playing some sensational football for the first five minutes. Oh, Phil Foden, what are you doing? Cunha gives it back, back to Cunha again. Gotta be a little bit patient here. Gordon, Fops, yes, wow, 11 minutes in. Carlos Fob has scored. Oh my lord. This is definitely a very good start. We're so close going to five minutes. And six minutes after, we have scored a sensational goal. It all started from Cunha. Actually, no, it's all started from Phil Foden. Gave the ball away. We gain possession, rotate the ball, circulate the possession. And that's a very good assist by Anthony Gordon. Again, we're not going to take this for granted. 12 minutes in, we cannot, we, we can't play like England. You know, after you score the first goal, you got to keep on going. You should be a little bit more hungry than just wanting to sit back and park the bus throughout the whole game. Oh, that's a good ball. Holland. Oh my god, that's a very good save by Kofar. It definitely going to go at the back of the net if he couldn't make that touch. Corner coming in for Man City. Good delivery. Damn. Yep. Did you see Lamina hold his hands up? He knows it was his responsibility to hit it away. I'm not sure what quite happened there. Ruben Diaz has tied the game right before halftime. Let's see. Lamina missed the ball completely. But nobody was marking Ruben Diaz, which makes it very easy for him. And Kofar, from that angle, he can't really do a single thing. And right there, Man City has equalized. Gomez wins the ball in the air. Lamina gave the ball away. That's some really quick football there. But, oh, De Bruyne, what are you doing? Not going to complain. Fobbs with the right foot, but that's a sensational block by John Stones. And to be honest, I'm not sure why. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, my Lord. Well, Santiago wanted to smash that one in, but straight at Ederson. But like I said, why is De Bruyne playing that deep in this lineup? Oh, that's a good ball over the top to Kevin De Bruyne. 81st minute in. Harlan. 
Damn it. Oh, God. Wow, we worked so hard in this game and we just couldn't get a single goal. Well, no, I mean, that is not true. Rodri has make it 2-1. Let's look at the replay again. The defending was quite non-existent. Breno tried to slid in in the last minute, but he got nothing out of it. And Rodri potentially scored a winner here, but wait. Fops. Where is Larson? To the middle. Oh my god. Larson, you should get there, man. You, you can be like a Harry Kane. One last chance for Man City. Here comes De Bruyne. Slid in. Oh, that's a brilliant tackle. Referee's going to blow the whistle here. And we have taken a defeat. To be honest, I'm very proud of this performance. We didn't get walked over by Man City. To be honest, and it was a good game by the Wolves today. But like I said, individual quality like De Bruyne, like Jack Grealish, like Rodri certainly shined. And we're just missing that element right now in our team. Well, it looks like Man City have won the league after the last game, I believe so. I mean, yeah, it looks like that way mathematically because if Man City lose the next three and Liverpool win the next three, it will still be two points short by Liverpool. So pretty much... The champion is done and dusted. It's all about that second, third, and fourth place. Or perhaps you can call it uh, a Champions League. Uh, yeah, Champions League spot. But when you look at it, we are in a danger. Well, we're not quite in a danger zone. So let's do the math here. So West Ham, we are not going to do worse than West Ham. That's for sure. So it's either the, the highest position we can end up is second and the lowest is fifth. But again, we got some tough games ahead. We got Crystal Palace in the next game. I believe they beat us 3-1 or 3-0 in the first half of the season. And we still have Liverpool and Arsenal as well. Again, it's not a, it's, it's not a, it's not, I mean, it's tough. It's going to be really, really tough. Crystal Palace, at one point, they were sitting at top five. I don't know what happened to them. Oh my god, Rob Holding is playing for Crystal Palace. It's so funny with that Rob Holding transfer. He's not he's not actually playing. He signed for um he signed for Crystal Palace for one million, I believe so, but he didn't quite feature it in the Premier League at all. But the lineup again, I'm not gonna go over it. It's pretty much what you guys would expect, except Fobbs coming back into the lineup. Samato on the ball. To Carlos Fops against Guayi to the middle. Cunha turn. Lamina Mc. What? Oh, I thought he scored. Oh my God! When we need a goal like this in this crucial moment, oh, it was only a few inches, only a few inches out. That was the chance to help us to take a one nothing lead. Here comes Munoz. Munoz. No, Tati, get close to him. Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. SA. Damn it. Oh, my God. Which is really bad, isn't it, at times like this? Aberici SA has make it 1 0. And by the way, that is a very, very good or a sick jersey there. Damn. SA, that was literally what I was talking about. Individual b brilliancy. We just need that in the team. No, Tati Gomez, what are you doing? You can't be beaten like that. Why, sir? SA. Oh, God. Game over. Oh, Lord. Tati Gomez. What are you doing at the back there? Crystal Palace has taken a 2 0 lead. It looks like for both fixtures, home and away against Crystal Palace, we are just not doing good. Last one minute. Can we score a consolation goal? Sarabia, poor touch. That pretty much sums up the entire game. And Crystal Palace has beaten us both home and away. A two goal for him. I mean, not two goals. Two goals by Eze. Back-to-back -back loss. And it looks like the top four is not looking very bright for us. We still have a chance to go for Champions League football. Because United lost... They're in poor, poor form. I got to look at what have they been doing recently. But if we win against Arsenal, which I think we might be able to do so, then top four is confirmed. Uh, but again, Spurs in good form. Liverpool in good form as well. Again, we're playing against Liverpool in the last game. So 
Wow, I mean, I don't know what to say. Arsenal, I mean, this game should have been played a long, long time ago, I believe. So I think it was in in real life. I think we play against Wolves in mid-April or something like that. But this is a rescheduled match because of the Carabao Cup final. But this is going to be a tough game. Are they still putting El Nani in there? That's a great question. <laughs> the answer is yes. You have Rice. You have Havertz. You have... I mean, they got Trent playing. I guess that is something that is positive. But, oh my god, El Nani as the captain. As the left eight. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Okay, so we just got to do our thing, isn't it? So, Fop's coming back in. I don't think I want to change the lineup. Should I change the lineup? Um, maybe I will give Maga a go today. Why not? So this is going to be the lineup. Maga coming back onto the lineup. So that is the only change that I've made. Fops over the top to Cunha. Oh my god. Gordon, finish it. Oh, straight to Ramsdale. Punch is not far. Header. Oh my god. We should have at least scored there. Cunha with his tricks three to so close providing a brilliant assist good tackle maga down the line cunha he's on side fobs good run oh is it penalty oh no 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 it's not a penalty it was the uh, it was a foul earlier but oh fobs looking very good but again the finishing touch is just lacking a little bit the header hits the bar no gordon Ramps are coming out, and he claims it. Gordon to Fobbs. Oh, that's a penalty. Yuri and Timber took down. What's his name? Fobbs. And that is going to be a red card, yellow card. I don't know what that is. Let's see what the referee has to say. It's a red card. Is it a red card? Maybe, maybe not, but I'll definitely take this. Absolutely, I will. Look at that. Is it outside the box, too? Oh no, it's outside the box. Wait. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Let me figure this out, shall we? I'm just gonna drill this one right here. To the hole. Oh my god, I just smashed El Nanny's into the butt. <laughs> oh my god. Can we not catch a break? We have some really, really good chances for the past three games, and we're not. And we kept being denied by the bar. For real? Oh, oh my, oh my days. We have tried so hard to score, ladies and gentlemen. We just can't find our shooting boot. But when Arsenal take one shot, they score. How is this possible? Lamina... Should have done better, but it was a sensational header as well, hitting underneath the bar. When I hit the bar, it goes out of play or it wouldn't result in a goal. But when the opposition score or it hits the bar, it's going to go in. How lucky is that? Saka against Breno. You can't allow them to take that much space. But that's a very good tackle by Tati Gomez. Quick one, two. To Larson. Oh, yes. What? No. You got to be kidding me, Ramsdale. He saved that one. Larson, man. Oh, we needed you the most. You have been sensational the entire season. And I can't believe you missed that. Referee blows the whistle. One nil. We can find our revenge. Arsenal has been playing with 10 men for more than 45 minutes. And turns out they were the one who scored. And they were the one who actually went into this game and beat us. And it's down to the last game of the season. When you look at the standing here, a lot to play for today. And a lot of scenarios could have happened or could happen if United win. Uh, actually, no, put it this way. Spurs, if... All Spurs, Wolves, and United win, then United will be playing Europa League next season. If we draw points, right? If we draw points in any means and United has won their game, like they have to win their game.
Yeah, I think the goal difference wouldn't matter. But if United win their game, then we won't qualify for Champions League football. But again, it's easier said than done because we're playing against Liverpool away at Anfield. Holy, this is a decent team for Liverpool. But I feel like Liverpool and Arsenal, they did some sort of a swap deal with Martinelli going to the other side as well. So... I don't know. It's a little bit fishy for me. Two Arsenal plays for Liverpool in one season. Absolutely, absolutely weird. But final game of the season. I think it's make it or break it. With this lineup, we just got to go for it. All or nothing. I, I, I don't care what's happened in the match. As long as we're causing chaos. As long as we win or trying to take a point at least. Oh my god. Darwin Nunes. Oh. Well, that was a good turn. Was it the hollow who came out from his back line? We held so well in the first half, actually. We Technically, we created more chances than Liverpool. But Liverpool, you know, is that team with no BS. There's a reason why they're sitting a second there. And uh, no, we're taking a 1-0. Not a lead, but a loss so far. Gomez, oh my god, pick up the ball. He did this out of nowhere as well. We took so many shots in this game. They, they're either over the bar, just wide, or just smashing into somebody for a block. But this time, it was a big gamble, isn't it? Oh my god, underneath Larson. Thank god he did jump. <laughs> if he didn't, I'm sure it would have smashed his balls. We got how many? How, how much more? 15 more minutes to go. Come on, we need to find that win here. Last four minutes of the season. Are we able to get something out of it? I know to Liverpool, it doesn't mean anything to them because they have already qualified for Champions League football. Larson. Oh, come on. That is not a good pass by Dejalo. We just wasted that one again. But we just need to get the ball here as soon as possible. But against Diaz, against the Hollow. Yep. The game's going to end in a draw unless they score. But no. Ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude our 2023-2024 season. A dead rubber match for Liverpool. But we still couldn't get anything out of it. Yes, we might have tied the game up in the last few minutes. But again, it was not good enough for us to go ahead and win this game. We absolutely blown it. We did. I mean, we were in a very good position. We started this episode off sitting at second. But then the entire episode, right, of 15 points, we were only able to collect four points. And that was the grave area. This is where we need to improve next season. But again, I don't want to complain about anything because nobody would have expected us to be, you know, that far into the competition, that far into the league as well. A lot of you guys might be predicted that Wolves might just missed out on Europe, which means sitting at eighth or ninth. But no, we actually made a great effort in this season. I mean, we scored plenty of goals. But defensive-wise, we are still... I mean, we're, no, we're not far off from, you know, from United. But United won their last game. Spurs won their last game. And we drew our last game. Um, well, that's pretty much conclude the season. Again, I'm just very proud of everybody in the team. Nobody expected us to be being this good or trying to compete for European spot. Again, I, I think it's quite realistic for us to be in Europa League next season. Again, I don't think our squad is ready in the Champions League. Even though we are in the Champions League, I don't think we are going to qualify for the round of 16 based on what's going to happen in the future. But when you look at the objective for this season, we have achieved 90, which is very, very good. Um, we finished top half of the table. In fact, we claimed the, uh, or what I'm talking about. Uh, well, in fact, we did go for top four, top five, get 10 wins this season. We got 30. So that is, I mean, that's definitely, I don't know what kind of objective that is. And the youth development, I don't really care too much about it, if I'm being totally honest. But that is pretty much it here. Stats-wise, who would have thought Jack Grealish have scored 28 goals? And Larson's not far off, 17 goals. And Cunha, it's one goal behind him. Both strikers, this, this 
despite playing a platoon role or kind of rotation, that type of role, I mean, they're still very, very effective in front of goals. But it was a shame towards the end there. We just couldn't get anything out of it. Sarabia turns out to have 14 assists. Out of nowhere, Lamina sitting at 6 as well. FA Cup, I don't think there is... I mean, Juani Chan and and Sarabia, they're both named top 5 in the... Um, in the assist column but that's pretty much it for this season absolutely amazing i think there are a few more stuff i want to do before the end of this episode and this is exactly what i'm talking about three youth players are feeling unsettled miranda abreu and also fernandez uh let's see miranda fernandez i think it was him I don't think he's bad, to be honest, so I'm just going to... Oh, three of our center back has turned 18, or at least two of them just turned 18 recently. Um, I think they're good enough to be handed out a contract. They might not be ready for next season, but I would definitely going to send them out on loan. Last monthly scouting report before the end of the episode. Uh, this time, anybody? Ooh, the Sosa Castro can stay. But for Ribeiro, no, he's way too low with that current valuation. In terms of the academy, it looks like we have to let go of Miguel Costa. Potential is very low. Other than that, Murillo continue to shine in the academy. We are a few days away heading to the next season. But of course, we have to conclude this season, isn't it? So this is something that I always do, uh, especially in the last part of the finale. I usually just kind of go over the players and talk about them. Uh, Bentley, I thought he is, I thought he was pretty good, especially in the cup competition. Doesn't He didn't do anything that makes me feel like, oh, you know what? He's not good for the squad. But with 12 months uh, coming to an end of his contract, I might as well just cash him in. King, again, I don't understand how I still haven't found a suitable buyer. Kofar has been really impressive, went up by two. Um, of course, I'm going to still be using him. I think he is really, really good. Uh, Louis Molden, again, we got plenty of great assets that went out on loan. I mean, those players are going to come back from loan. They will definitely be sold. I, Nori and Breno, I don't think in terms of next season, like these two players are still going to be in, at the club. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to talk about who's going to be staying or who's not. Uh, Breno has been decent. Dejalo has been decent as well. Gomez has been okay. I mean, towards the end, it was a little bit underwhelming for him. Pond, I've been trying to sell this player. I still couldn't find a suitable buyer. Rojo was really positive when he first started, but again, I have to just kind of left him at home because simply was he was not in a good form. Helder Fernandez, who got called up, showing great potential. But again, I don't think I'll be using him. Same, uh, I mean, Abreu. Was, uh, see, that's the thing. Abreu, I might be able to use him. I, th I might think about using him. But Miranda, again, no tag, which means that he is going to be sold. Dahlti is leaving to Crystal Palace once the window is open. Samedo, contra coming to an end. Again, with 12 more months to go. So um, I might do something about it. I don't know. Not yet. Maga has been decent once he called upon. Lamina, I thought he is really, really good. I might hand I might hand him a, a, a maybe you know a contract or two. Um, Balgarde, decent. Triori was good. Uh, Gomez, again, missed a big part of the season because of a broken toe. But at the start of the season, he looks really good. Uh, Pedro Mina, the wrong Pedro Mina, uh, um, Lima, it's pretty much getting so because it's not the right player, right? Uh, Juan Chan, it's good. But I feel like in rumors going around, he might be sold. So I think I might just kind of stick with that. Gordon was underwhelming at times, but still decent enough. Uh, Kiriwa, still looking to find a buyer for him. So Rabia is pretty much going it's going away for sure. 32 euro, 77 rated. I would rather, you know, kind of allow him to, to, to go. Why not? Fobbs, really, really good. Arguably my play of the season for sure. Um, there's a few more players that I don't. Guedes, I think Guedes should be sold, in my opinion. I think in real life, I don't think he's going to have a role to play. Larson was really good until the last two, three months where he just couldn't stop. You know, he just couldn't score any goals. Cunha, again, my view for him has changed. But again, still a little bit disappointed that he didn't quite contribute that much offensively. Fabio Silva looks like a very good player, isn't it? Certainly has a role to play. 
but I will just wait and see. And that is pretty much it for the player review for 2023-2024 season. Again, we're just a little bit short heading the Champions League, but I can't wait for next season to see what we can do with the squad in the Europa League. Again, there will be more fixtures. I feel like we are just a little bit, just a little bit short in terms of the numbers of players. I feel like there are times where we are just... You know, I, I hope we got more reinforcement than just sticking with the players that we have. I feel like in a lot of area, we could definitely improve, but we will leave that in the next episode. That is it for the first season. I just want to say a big thank you to all of you guys who have been supporting this channel, supporting the save, and more important, supporting me in general. Again, I, you know, it's a privilege for me to do this kind of a part-time basis. Uh, the, even though I have a job right now, I can't really upload every single day. Usually I have to take two days off. But again, I'm still trying to provide this as a consistent basis. So I still hope you, I still hope that the majority of you guys will stick with this channel for a very, very long time. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in a bit.